The Biden administration is continuing to grapple with the influx of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border, recording over 172,000 migrant arrests or encounters in March alone, nearly 19,000 of them unaccompanied children and teenagers. That is double the amount of minors detained back in February and the most ever recorded in a single month. So let's bring in the president and CEO of the National Immigration Forum, Ali Narani. Ali, thank you so much for being with us. And yes, we have all seen those heartbreaking images uh, of what's happening at our southern border. We know a lot of them are turned away, but the Biden administration is accepting children. What needs to happen? What needs to change? Well, what needs to happen is that the Biden administration needs to set up the infrastructure, the logistics and the processes so that children can go through uh, the process in a safe and humane way. And fortunately, the Biden administration is well on the path to achieving that. They started to co-host uh, border protection and health and human service staff so that the initial intake goes quicker. They're standing up facilities in Texas and other places across the country. And then most importantly, they're putting into place the system so that as children are you know, uh, uh, receiving their initial interviews, being vetted by Health and Human Services, that they're eventually being put in, uh, in, in the care of either a legal guardian or a foster home. So we are hoping that the process is really starting to pick up pace now. But Ali, is there a PR problem? Is there a messaging problem coming from or not coming from the Biden administration? Because clearly people are sending their children to the border, in some cases alone or in very dangerous conditions, thinking and knowing that they'll well, be accepted. Well, I think the bigger problem here is that as a nation for so long, we have in essence outsourced our immigration system to cartels. So what's happening when you're in Honduras, Guatemala or El Salvador is that the cartels and human smugglers are on the streets are in essence selling a lie to desperate families for anywhere between six and ten thousand dollars a pop. And with that lie, they're saying that lie is more or less telling these families that the United States border is open. The Biden administration has spent you know, considerable resources in a public education campaign in Central America. But remember, I mean, the cartels, they are savvy, they're sophisticated, and they, you know, they have a track record of getting people to the border because, again, Congress has failed to fix the system. So the question is, how does... Uh, how do co countries in Central America, Mexico, and the U.S. disrupt these smuggling networks, but do so in a way that protects the safety of these families? Day one in office, we heard from the Biden administration they reversed the ban on Muslim immigration here into this country. How, how far has that gone, and what more needs to be done to rectify what went wrong before in the former Trump administration? Well, it was a great first step on that first day to, to you know, eliminate that Muslim ban. Yet the Biden administration has not moved forward with increasing the number of refugees that we will resettle in the United States. In fact, just over the last few days, a new report by the International Rescue Committee found that under the Biden administration, they have A, not increased the level of refugees uh, to be resettled, um, B, that we're on track to resettle less than 5,000 refugees this year. Keep in mind that over 80 million people are displaced around the world. And third, and most importantly, Muslims are going to be disproportionately affected. In fact, under the Biden administration, only 42 Syrian refugees have been resettled in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that, I, is, there's just no other way to put it other than it's just a moral failure on the part of the United States. And it's something that President Biden can fix with a, a one stroke of a pen. Uh, Ali, I, I, one of my favorite lines from Hamilton is, immigrants, we get the job done. So we know that we have so many hardworking immigrant families who are small business owners in this country. Talk a little bit about what this pandemic has done to those businesses. Have they been more severely impacted than others? Well, immigrant-owned businesses employ over 8 million workers across the country. The majority of those workers are native-born American workers. They generate over $1 trillion in economic output. You know, there was research just released, I believe, last fall that over a third of immigrant-owned businesses experienced a significant loss because of COVID-19. We need to make sure that the administration whether it's the Biden administration or even state and local governments are really reaching out to immigrant business owners who are really revitalizing the neighborhoods across the country that so depend on, you know, the infusion of energy and talent that comes with the immigrant community. So it has been a long, a long road, just like it's been for every, all of us over the course of this pandemic. But fortunately, 
immigrants, whether they're business owners or workers, are standing shoulder to shoulder with U.S. citizens to get our nation through COVID-19. So yes, there's a lot that can be done, um, but I think ultimately it'll be the energy and the, the entrepreneurship of immigrants as well as those who've been here for generations. Well, President and CEO of the National Immigration Forum, Ali Nurani, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Some very interesting uh, insights there. So we appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.